This is Sports Rage. I am Renzi. The Pips, the players, the hustlers, the people that bust them, and everybody else uh, in between. I see our boy Lawrence says, don't sleep on the Chargers with a coach. I think they'll be in the mix fast. Uh, I understand what you're saying, uh, but he'll get these guys to play. No, he will get them to play, and they're not terrible. They're Like I said, I think they're going to be a competitive team, and, and as far as the playoffs, love the show. Uh, what's up? Uh, shout out to Cam and, uh, and Joe. Uh, all right, so shout out to our boy Lauren here. Thanks for tuning in. So um, I, I don't dispute that. I'm just stating. They're a couple of years away uh, right now. All right, Joe, so uh, NFL football, what do you got for us? What are your best bets this week? And good call last week. Great call last week on the Baker Mayfield prop. Yeah. Thank you. This week, I'm looking at the Baltimore Ravens to be able to come out and cover the spread against the Kansas City Chiefs. I really hope the Josh Allen curse is really here for Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. But I think with the weather in Baltimore this weekend, KC's going to struggle. I'm taking Patrick Mahomes under the 24 and a half um, passing completions in that one. It's coming in at minus 122. I'm also taking KC's team total under 20 and a half. I just look at them versus this defense, and I think they do show their struggles so give me the Ravens laying the three and a half I think you can even extend it up to six and a half I really do believe they win this one by a touchdown and that's coming in at plus 132 and I'm gonna rely on I think we can extend it up to six and a half anyone out of stars yeah Joe Madden does Joe Joe does doing it doing it that clip was the best, Brancy. I can't get that. Who's got this? I got the stones yeah. to take the Who's got the stone? No one has the stones but me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. I said, everybody's on Baltimore. What this guy's yeah, talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least he's the best. No, yeah. but you say you say up to six yeah. and a half. Shout out to everyone joining us on Sirius XM Channel 159. I'm on the, uh, the under six and a half in this Kraken and Blues game. And the second period is just uh, underway here. So, uh, Joe, you like Baltimore. And uh, what are your player props for people just joining us on Sirius uh, right now? Then we'll get into the San Francisco game. Absolutely. I'm taking Patrick Mahomes under 24 and a half uh, passing completions in this one. I'm going to take Lamar Jackson over 66 and a half rushing yards. If that number has moved up, I take it up to 70. I do think he uses his legs a lot in this game. And then tight end Mark Andrews is back. And while lots of people thinking he might be a decoy, he was Lamar's number one target. He's able to get in that end zone. So I'm taking him for the anytime touchdown at plus 240. All right, what do you think about the Detroit Lions and the San Francisco 49er game? I can't wait for this game, and I think it's going to be super competitive, especially in that first half. I'm taking the Lions plus the points in the first half. You can get them plus four and a half at minus 120. I do think at the end of the day, the 49ers end up winning this game. I'm just not sure about the spread for the full game, but I am relying on the Lions in that first half. I think they're going to be able to run the clock here, keep time of possession. I think Jared Goff, over one and a half passing touchdowns as well as in play, as well as Brock Purdy uh, for his longest completion that number coming in at 40 and a half at minus 112 to the over we know he's going to get some big bombs on the secondary here of the lions and i really do think he'll have a couple of passes over this number you got to look at george kittle here best tight end in the league that longest reception for him coming in at 23 and a half i think he nicely goes over that and then the wide receiver saint brown here for the lions i think his receiving yard number is just too low 85 and a half that number was earlier uh today last week he only had 77 but in the three no five games prior he hit 100 or more so i have faith in him to go over the 85 in this one sharp picks good stuff uh Mm -hmm. joe madden uh, kick it with us for the record. 5-1 now for the Colorado Avalanche over the LA Kings. And if you're the Kings, like, it's one it's one thing to lose, but if they lose this game 8-1. Like, are they quitting on the coach now? Is this, like, what's going yeah. on here? Like, at some point. I remember, Cam, I talked about it, like, two weeks ago. This is turning into, like, the start of the Oilers season. Remember I said, I said, it's one thing yep. when you're, you've lost 5 of 6. Then you get into that little, like, 9 of 10 and people, that's one, you know, my like my collar, it's a little tight. And it's like, guys, yeah. bro, they're into like 12 of 15, 13 of 15, and I, it's getting worse. They lost, they're losing to bad teams, and now you're getting your ass out. handed to you. You're getting blown out. Like, if your your ownership, you might not have a choice. Like, he might not make it through the weekend. I called oh, I it two, two weeks. I said, McClanahan, he's done. Yeah. Oh, he's he's done. done. And I'll tell you another thing, Gabe, for a team that talented. It's not even his fault. I don't even blame no, him. Not. It's not it's not his, what do you want him to do? He can't That's shoot my, the puck. 
I don't have proof, but I'm going to assume when you see hockey teams collapse like this, there's a problem with the room. Doughty called out all these guys. Their goaltending reeks. Red light, Redditch. I saw some of the goals Colorado scored tonight. You could have saved them, Renzi. Like, this oh, guy's they're bad, bad. They're bad. bad I told bad, you. Bad, bad. Like, very bad. Like, it's They're crazy. brutal, Joe. The LA Kings. What a, what a disappointment. Uh, I didn't bet on them. I've given up on this team, but... Okay, so I want to get Joe's picks before we get out, get, get her out of here for Saturday's NHL slate. So we got the Boston Bruins in Philadelphia. Anytime I see the Bruins, only minus 165, I'm in. Uh, so the Flyers are hosting the Bruins. Capitals at Stars. This is Cam's favorite game of the day tomorrow. His two favorite teams, the Sabres and the Sharks, are going head-to-head. Ooh, <laughs> great game. Oh, the Oilers riding that 15-game win streak. Minus 210 against the Predators. Coyotes, Canes, the Blue Blind Rouge, the Canada, the Montreal, or in Pittsburgh against the Pence, uh, Devils, Lightning, Rangers, Sens, Leafs, Jets in the peg, Florida Panthers and the Islanders, big time games tomorrow, uh, Columbus are in the VNC, the Canucks are a uh, minus 300, what do you think, um, what do you think of Saturday's card, Joe, who do you like? Yeah, lots of great games out there. I am looking at the Edmonton Oilers taking on the Nashville Predators. As soon as they beat Calgary, I really did believe they'd go um, on a 16-game winning streak into the All-Star break. I do think they get it done versus the Predators, and I'm really counting on them to lock down again defensively, something we really haven't been able to say about this Edmonton team since this winning streak. They've been so phenomenally strong, and so is Skinner. So I'd look at the Predators, a team total. I believe it's at two and a half. I still think they go under that one. I think Edmonton wins this in another kind of three to two style game. So I like that under six and a half between the Buffalo Sabres and the San Jose Sharks. You know, you've got the Sharks winning their last three. They've got a couple games still on deck before the all-star break. This is the last game for the Buffalo Sabres. They're off that win versus the Kings. And I think that was a really high point. I think the Sharks can probably get it done at home. We're getting great plus money with them. And you're right. The Boston Bruins is just Got to be a way to bet them here, not on the money line. I think they can cover that puck line versus the Philadelphia Flyers. We've got Urson in goal, and he must be getting tired out there now that he's the basically only goalie for the Philadelphia Flyers. I also think this team has kind of got, with all the controversy, probably not the greatest locker room right now, losing their last four. So I'd take the Boston Bruins on that puck line for a nice big win tomorrow. That's coming in at plus 164. I'd look at the first period puck line as well, laying the half a goal, because I do think they get up from the very start in it. The Kraken? Seattle Kraken have just taken a 2-1 lead. Get Kraken! Yeah! There we go. <laughs> like that. Excellent. 16 minutes remaining in the second period uh, right now. So four minutes in to the second period of play to Kraken. Light the lamp. The total still six and a half. The Kraken are now minus three. 50. Great stuff as always, Joe. We appreciate your time. Thanks a lot for taking the time to be with us tonight. Have a great weekend, Joe. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They get it. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid.
I refer to him as a game manager, Mark. I mean, throwing for over 250 yards in divisional round, 39 attempts. I don't know if that really chalks up to being a game manager. He was kind of throwing it around with one touchdown, no interceptions. Pretty efficient. Whatever we saw from Jared Goff in two home playoff games, I would expect something to dynamically different from what we're going to see from him on the road. Uh, that's just the way it's been his entire career. His home road splits have always been pretty dynamic. Football full circle, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman Trophy the early line. and what it all means individual success. You should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon. Not bought at this deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news trades, cuts. And some movement in terms of starting quarterback, Pharrell, coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decisions. I have no idea what the heck the Blazers are doing and what they're doing. In game live, Just prime time. A yard for a grand slam. The bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to 2 baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race that was late bad. night. We waited for a one and a half. We got paid. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't like the two and a half. Well, Jumped on. There's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever. These are the best weeks to bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Murray. The Seattle Kraken just scored again. The Blues just called a timeout. 3-1 right now with 13 minutes remaining in the second period of play. We've got uh, an NBA basketball game going on. A light night tonight in the association. And uh, the Spurs are rolling the Blazers uh, right now. I did like the Spurs, but a bit more selective this week, and it's working for me. Like, I'm not forcing plays at all. Like, if I like it, I play it. If I don't, I sort of just move on. And I have left a few winners on the table, but I'm sure I've also lost a couple of games that I would have, you know, bet too. Uh, you know, it goes both ways, but I'm just sort of in a disciplined mode uh, this week. It's been working out for me. So the only play I played in this game was Victor Wembanyama over 23 and a half points scored. I was going to play it at 24 and a half, but it came down to 23 and a half. I don't think we're going to get there. He's got 18 points right now, but they're winning 81 to 68 with three minutes left, Cam. And, Yep. Popovich is a jerk, and he doesn't play Wembenyama enough. So if he they're winning, like, I don't know if he's going to play. No, <laughs> he, he like, could care Pop less about your prop Pop. struggling. He's struggling. <laughs> I'm Greg Popovich. Your Imagine in real struggling. life, too, what yeah. he would really tell you. He'd be like, you can go F yourself, you and your stupid yeah. prop. Who oh, the yeah, hell are you anyways, you stupid you bald? Like, like, yeah, he'd just go off on us. You think I give a crap about your stupid prop? Yeah, yeah, settle down, I'm protecting this kid and, like, trying to get him a 20-year career? And you, you care about your prop? Yeah, a pop would be, exactly. have to be the best. Hey, man, Brentsy, we crushed that tennis last night with Sinner. He not only beat Djokovic, he murdered him. He took him out to the woodshed, and we got another one for you tonight. I'm looking at the spread with Zhang, plus five and a half games, baby. It's going to be tough. Yeah, though. we'll get to the tennis before, t- yeah. uh, before I was going to say it was not tease off. Before first serve, that's what he got to yeah. say. Before first serve. Yeah. Before first serve. Oh, yeah, no, no, good, good call. You've been in, in his zone, so have I. Um, last night, same thing. It's been two nights in a row, but, yeah, good call by you, Kev. You were on Sinner. I didn't take him, so props to you. Yeah. Thanks. I only bet the over, and I nearly didn't hit it because Sinner was killing him so much, but I Joker, know. like, finally won a set. And I was like, all right, good. I won that bet, and I didn't take anything else, so I won 1-0 and all there, uh, but I've been hitting the women's stuff. But then the um, the other one with Medvedev, I took what Medvedev. Game. He was down Whoa. two sets to none, to nothing, and yes. I took the over. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going down without a fight. I'm taking the over. And Take he came back and won, so I ended up going 2-0. and oh. So I went 3-0 and oh in the tennis. I went like 4-0 and oh in the tennis two nights ago, Cam. We're on like a 7-0 and oh tennis run. Oh, we're, we're, we'll get to our tennis, tennis picks. Yeah. yeah, We'll get to the tennis. It's, it, 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 uh, it's at 3.30 Eastern time, 12.30 Pacific tonight, the, uh, nice. the woman's final. Um, let's bring in Rob Vino right now from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in the house. Mr. Vino, what's going on, Rob? How you doing tonight? Thanks for joining us. Uh, I am good, but how are you guys tonight? You sound like you're on fire. And, hey, I, I had the wrong end of that, Cam. I just heard you talking. In game, I took Djokovic plus 10 and a half games, and he lost by 11. 
miserable son of a gun. Wow. And he had a 40 Those love tennis lead lines in one of the are games. Sharp, bro. They are really yeah, sharp. Yeah, he I'll had talk- a 40 love lead in one of those games in the final set, and um, Sinner ran off five straight points and won the game and broke them. And that that was really the end of that. I'll tell you I what, guys. I'll this to you guys. Djokovic watching him game, and I watch with a keen eye. He's getting older. He's getting more right. frustrated. There's a lot of good young guys on tour. Sinner, probably the best of them all. We're never going to get guys like Sinner at plus 180 again. We got to watch Djokovic. He might be fave material. I know he's still going to win some matches. I'm talking about like when he goes deep into tournaments, like semis and finals. I wouldn't overreact by it, but I hear what you're saying. He can't be on top forever. But yeah. last night was just crazy because Djokovic is the best returner ever, Rob, right? Yeah. As you were watching last night, like he that's his thing. And he was helpless. He looked like yeah. you or me or something. Like he could not. And even McEnroe said, he said, man, he goes, I know that Sinner's drilling it right now. But he goes, he's hitting it in the same effing spot over and over. Yeah. And Joker's not doing anything. Like even McEnroe said, I know it's not easy, but. He's telegraphing because you're not stopping it. He kept on going for the corner shot. Boom, 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 yep. over and over. And Joker's meekly getting shots back. And then Joker starts like double faulting and stuff. It got in his head. You're right, Cam. You know what I mean? I know he's, like, he's getting a little bit older. But the thing is, I brought it up too, guys. Fritz had him running, bro, the other night. He's had a, He looked tired this week. But let's not yeah. forget, it's hot as hell there, right? The heat caught up to him a yeah. bit, I think, too. Um, he's still a great player, but Sinner's really coming on. I was surprised, Cam, to see how big of a favorite Sinner was against Medvedev, actually. It's, he's it's a big a, favorite. It's too, it's too big of a line, but I'll say this about Sinner. He's just one of those guys, Gabe, look at his body type. He is so long and lean. He's like a condor. And that's the one thing he get, and he can move for a big tall guy. He's got like he and and you watch his cross. Medvedev has to be gassed after last night, bro. Yeah, you know what? That's a great call, Medvedev. Like he might be on fumes. That's why the line's inflated. I think. Good call. Uh, I'm just I'm I'm Captain Chalk here. I'm just gonna parlay. uh, I'm gonna parlay Sinner and Sabalenka. (laughs) (laughs) What do you think, Rob? We'll get into the totals in a second and the handicap. We'll get to the handicaps yeah. and everything in a second. Yeah, yeah, but what do you yeah, think yeah. of it? What do you think of the matches, Rob? Yeah. Well, I, I came back and I did have Medvedev last night, and that looked lousy after two sets. But he's a fighter, that guy. Um, whenever I watch him, he fights. He get a good um, effort out of him. I'll say this about, and I know in watching it, and I know you guys, by talking to you now, watched it as well. It looked to me as if on Sinner's serve, his service games, Djokovic wasn't using very much. It's like, well, if I can get to it, I'll get to it. If I can't, you know, I'll just yeah. serve and win my game and maybe try and break them one, use effort one game. But some of those returns, like you said, Gabe, were so meek. And some of those, McEnroe even said, I can't believe he didn't even try and put a racket on the ball. He just let it go. So he looked like he was either conserving energy or something. And to the point of how hot it was, when that woman fainted in the stands last night, I'm like, how long is this going to last for? They stopped the game and, uh, and paused not it for help. a while. I think it was the Dude, I had the over. I, it was. I had the over. over. That helped us. Big time. Dude, it, it was 40 did. 45 5. Sinner was killing him. Sinner like, had yep. him on the ropes. And then suddenly it felt like it was longer. It was only four minutes and 23 seconds, but there was a four minute delay. And I knew I was, and I was, I was panicking because I was like, if he doesn't win this set, I'm going to lose my total bet. So right. I, I need him to win this set. <laughs> and I was like, you know this, and I actually felt bad because I mean, I mean, like you said, I watch this all the time, Rob. I felt bad last night. I was like, man, I feel bad for this lady and stuff, but this actually helps my bet. Like last they were attending to her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, you couldn't prevent real. her. You can prevent her from getting heat stroke or Dude, whatever. You just roll with the punch. A woman, like a a right? woman collapsed and fainted. I thought she died in front of me at the Rose Bowl. She, really? I, I asked the medics. They were. She was okay. They said same thing. She had a. Uh, she fainted. It was like a heat. Whatever. It was kind of hot and. Um, yeah, and it was kind of scary though because she fell. I was like, oh my god. So I, I, I first thing I thought it was wow, but. What about what do you think about the sides here, Rob? Uh, Sabalenka and Zhang, and then the men's final. Any take? It's hard, but do you want to lay six dollars or whatever five ninety to to play Sabalenka? I mean, she's such a force. Um, I'd almost rather try and take the underdog in that instance. Uh, and the other side, I, 
I have an affection for Medvedev. I get the idea that he had to really grind it out last night, but you do get the one day off. Maybe he can come back. I don't know. Um, it, it'll be tough, but plus 230 to me looks kind of attractive. Maybe I'd have to go to games and take plus yeah. games rather than just play um, straight money line. The problem is, though, Rob, when you take that angle and attack, Sinner hasn't lost one set this whole tournament, including sweeping Djokovic. He's one of those yeah, guys, you notice his wins like 6-1, 6-2. He's, he kind of ruins the dog and, and the spread betting. And I will say this, guys, in women's tennis, the spread betting makes a lot more sense than the guys. That's the thing. Say Sabalenka beats uh, Zhang 7-6, 6-3. You win. Like, you're getting five and a half games. And I think yeah. Sabalenka will probably win. But this girl, the Chinese man, she, she's awesome. Like, I've, I've been watching her career grow. Be very careful. She's the next big thing. She's a very, very underrated player. I'll take over Plus 19 games. and Let's a half. Go. You know yes. what I love about this? The women's, and I, I, I escaped the other day, guys, in the women's, was 22 and a half, and it got to 23. You know what I love about the total, Rob? You know I love my overs, buddy. Uh, 19 and a half. I don't need three sets to get 19 well, you don't. and a half. 6-4, six, 6-4 right. six, gets me there. Man, you give me a 7-5, I'm there. You give me a tiebreaker, I'm there. Right? says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. As a game manager, Mark, I mean, throwing for over 250 yards in divisional round, 39 attempts. I don't know if that really chalks up to being a game manager. He was kind of throwing it around with one touchdown, no interceptions, pretty efficient. Whatever we saw from Jared Goff in two home playoff games, I would expect something to dynamically different from what we're going to see from him on the road. Uh, that's just the way it's been his entire career. His home road splits have always been pretty dynamic. Football full circle, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman the early line and what it all means individual success. You should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon. Not bought at this deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news trades, cuts, and some movement in terms of starting quarterbacks. Pharrell, quarterback. coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decisions. You have no idea. What the heck the Blazers are doing and what they're doing. In game live. Just prime time. Yard for a grand slam. In the bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to 2 baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race late night. We waited for a one and a half. We got paid. Yeah. We didn't like the two and a half. Yeah. Jumped on. There's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever. These are the best weeks to bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
This is Sports Rage. I'm Ramsey. Me and uh, Rob Vino just sort of talk a little Dodger baseball. Rob's a Dodger fan. Uh, when did you, yeah. How did you become a Dodger fan, Rob? When did this happen? You know what? My dad, because I grew up in Connecticut, lived there the first 31 years of my life, and my dad was a Brooklyn Dodgers fan. You had your choice in New York, then Yankees, Giants, or yeah. Dodgers, and he was a Dodger fan all the way, so he just raised me that way. Um, took on to it pretty quick. That's a pretty so cool Dodger So it's been Dodger your entire memories. life. It has, cool. yeah. Me too. Yeah. Like So all for me, teams. I've been a Dodger fan since like 1976. 75, 76, so... And I don't know why either. Like, you know, I had the Expos and stuff, but Dusty Baker was my favorite player as a kid. Kind of random. It's like that he's been around all these years after this. But Dusty Baker's my favorite kid. Player. And I like the Expos too, but you know what I mean? I was I was a Dodger all the way through. And I had like, I had you know, that, that hat and everything. And I went to see, the, it was like the first year the Olympic Stadium opened, like 76 Olympics, 1977. And my mother, may she rest in peace, was a good looking woman. And I was a kid. And I went down to the dugout, Rob, during batting practice. And Steve Yeager, uh, and Cam, Steve Yeager, bro, if you remember, he's yeah. like the yeah. ultimate, like, 70s swinger orgy looking dude. Yeah. Like, for he sure. had, like, the, the shirt open, the chest no. hair, like, the chains, <laughs> and, like, like, you know what I mean? Hey, baby. You know, he was one of those, hey, baby. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the 70s, right? He made a beeline for my mom, man. I was there, and I was a Dodger fan. I was like, Mr. Yeager, can I get an autograph, please? Mr. Yeager. And he gets my he gets the ball, and he starts flirting with my mom and stuff. And he goes, you know what, kid? He goes, hold on. I'm going to be back in, like, five minutes, all right? And he comes back out, and he goes, instead of getting me, he goes, I'm a nobody, kid. He goes, I thought you would like Steve Garvey and um, and Ron Say and Dusty Baker and everyone else's autograph. He goes, I got the whole team right. to sign it for you. That's the whole great. team. Yeah. The whole team. Wow. 1977, a team to play the Yankees after and stuff. Whole team signed it for me. And um, and uh, I wrote a letter to the Dodgers after as a kid. I was like, thank you very much. You know what I mean? For signing my baseball. So love the Dodgers crazy. and stuff. I did and the same thing. They, res- yeah. they responded to my letter and they they sent me a baseball, like a nice baseball holder oh, for awesome. it. And they said, Well, you better protect that ball, kid. Here's and it was like a case. And they sent me a free membership of the Dodgers fan club. And that's they great. said, You'll bleed right. Dodger Blue for life. Said Dodger for life, Dodger Blue, and it was a letter from them and stuff. That's Dear so Gabriel cool. Moranzi, you are now a yes. Dodger for life. And like, you know what I mean? It was like once a Dodger, dude. always a Dodger. And here I am, 55 years later, 50 years later. Dude, I, I, I wrote a letter to Payne Stewart when he won the Kemper Open when oh, he was wow. there. And I go, you are my favorite golfer. Thank you for winning the golf tournament, da da da, da. Guy wrote me back a handwritten letter and a wow, picture of this? him. He was sponsored by NFL. He was the first, first golfer sponsored oh, yeah, yeah, by yeah, the yeah. NFL. And had all the logos and all the like pictures of, like, you know, Baltimore Ravens. He'd have, like, the purple knickers with, like, a – you know, like a different tin shirt. Uh, it was awesome, dude. Like, I'm like, I think people don't do that today. Imagine a kid going up to an no. athlete now. And he's like, oh, yeah. That's the I'm difference now. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. think a team sending you a baseball holder that's like 24 bucks that say buy one? Like, damn, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> what yeah. a difference, eh, Rob? Like, uh, it's made. Although, yeah. last thing, we'll get to the picks. Last thing I'll say, and this is a funny story because I brought up Euchre by chats earlier, Ken. Rob, yeah. every Dodger that are our heroes, bro, are jerks. One by one, systematically, I met them all and was heartbroken. Davey Lopes, manager of the Milwaukee Brewers. I was the Expos postgame show host. I go up to him. Mr. Lopes, I stick my hand out. I stick my hand Mr. Lopes, massive fan, grew up loving the Dodgers. Can I get a couple of minutes with you? Love to have you on my show. Why don't you go after yourself? All right, Ooh. walks away from me. I didn't say anything. Like, like, I'm like, why don't you just get busy? Like, and like, that and like, what and like Lopes just looked at me. Now, I should know he got fired like two, three days later, yeah. right? Bill Russell met Bill Russell, sort of gave me a crooked eye. I don't know. I might have smelled like weed or something, I think. Uh, so, <laughs> Bill Russell gave me a crooked eye. Tommy Lasorda, like, if looks could kill, Tommy Lasorda, like, I get, we'll get to the picks, but I got so many stories, Rob. This is I'll tell this one in like 60 seconds. I'm living in L.A. It's like 1989, Hollywood. You know, I'm a metalhead, but I love the Dodgers and stuff. Living life, right? Living in Hollywood, going to, playing in a band, going to Dodger games. I'm on the bus going to the Dodgers game. 
we get into like downtown LA and stuff, these kids get on the bus and I'm thinking they come, they make, they come right to the back of the bus and they're like teenagers. It's like five, six of them type of thing. And I'm thinking, man, these guys are going to like rob me or something. Like they're coming right for me. And they sit down they're like, you going to the baseball game? And I had a Dodger hat on. I said, yeah, yeah, I'm going. They're like, you, you need a ticket? And I'm thinking, what, are you going to rob me now? Like when I buy a ticket from them? And then the kid goes, uh, he goes, we have extra tickets. And in fact, he goes, we have field passes. And I'm thinking, am I getting set up here? And he goes, yeah, yeah, our buddy here, this guy talked someone off a roof and is the Dodger community star of the day. Oh, <laughs> someone was going to kill himself and he talked someone off a roof. I said, what? He goes, word of no lie, bro. He goes, yeah, if you want to come in with us, you're free to come with us. We got an extra pass. Amazing. I'm like, what? Oh, that's we walk in. I'm sitting on the bus one minute. Ten minutes later, I'm in a Dodgers dugout and clubhouse meeting Tommy Lasorda. Except I stick out, Cam. They're like 14 years old. I'm like a 22-year-old metalhead that's like smoking a bong. I got long hair and a hat. And I'm looking. I'm like, this is amazing. I can't believe I'm here. I'm just not in the media or anything, Rob, right? I cannot believe I'm in a Dodgers dugout. I was like, this is unbelievable. Tommy Lasorda is like, and who are you? Are you with them? And why are you like, why am I meeting you? So they brought us up to meet Tommy Lasorda. And he took a picture with all the kids except me. He's like, well, you're not really with them, are you? So, no. Right? I was like, they gave them all this stuff. I was like, effing the sort of man. I don't look up to you, bro. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, so my God. Do- Dodgers are jerks. I got great ones. But anyways, I, I'll shut up. So, uh, what do you think about the NFL, uh, Rob? Uh, we betting overs in both games? Well, I can tell you that I've already gotten to the Lions and 49ers game. The first bet I made was first half over 25. I think it was at the time. I think we're looking at 25 and a half right now. The announcement that Debo Samuel, in fact, gave before I came on, I didn't even check to see if that total had moved any when they officially announced Samuel. Up to 52. To yeah, they're, they're making it tough, um, but it's hard to make the case against it. Right. Um, but I thought first half was probably the right way to play. And I thought that there's just going to be too many opportunities here to ignore. You know, when you watch Green Bay last week, Gabe, it comes to your mind right away. Green Bay and Detroit offensively look like mirror images. Great offensive lines. Aaron Jones had a day, right? Run the football, then work off of that. Jordan Love had guys running free all over the place. In fact, yeah, they had nine possessions last week, 10 actually, but one was a kneel down before halftime. So Green Bay used nine offensive possessions. They got five trips, um, five drives of over 58 yards. Four of them got into the red zone. But in the red zone, they couldn't do anything. Only got 13 points out of those trips. And if Detroit makes any, um, you know, turns threes into seven, so to speak, because Green Bay actually had a turnover on downs in one of those, then they're going to score some points here. I mean, it, it, Green Bay was just up and down the field, outgained San Francisco at halftime. And – If I flip it over, I just don't trust Detroit defensively whatsoever. I mean, they do two things well. Like we said last week, they stopped the run Aiden Hutchinson pass rushes. But I tell you what, Tampa ran for six a pop, even though they didn't do it a lot. And even though Mayfield got sacked four times, he still threw for over 300. And two games straight, that defense has allowed over seven yards of play at home. So I I kind of feel like 30 without the weather element because he looked uncomfortable. Do I wear a glove? Do I not wear a glove? What do I do here? Um, I think he'll probably have a better game, and I think McCaffrey might run wild in this one. So I kind of like first half. Both of these teams are big first half scoring teams. C- combine them, they totaled like twenty nine, a little over twenty nine points every first half. And last week they got off the sluggish first half starts. I think they'll probably get the pedal going here a little quicker this week. So I- I'm definitely on first half over. Could get the full game as well. Rob Vino uh, joining us. Rob, the Alliance spreads up to seven and a half. Uh, right now, so it moved off the key number of seven, and there's some fours popping up in the AFC Conference Championship game. Any opinion on the sides? Well, tell me what you think, Gabe. I mean, the more, and it takes me like five days to work through every single thought in my head, but I come to the conclusion that Kansas City-Baltimore somewhat reminds me of the Michigan-Washington National Championship game, where the hardball team, you give them 60 minutes, and they're going to wear you down. They just they seem to be a little bit too physical to to me for the Chiefs. Maybe they don't get them right away, but I think that they can wear them down. And I, I keep countering that with what if Patrick Mahomes gets up early 
do I believe Lamar Jackson can come from behind? They're great front runners in the playoffs all the time, right? And I think that's the stigma still attached to Lamar is, yeah, it's all well and good when you're ahead, but can you bring a team back if Mahomes gets ahead 10 nothing, 14 nothing last week? They're 10-10 at halftime. It wasn't all roses for the Ravens last week until the third quarter started. Then they pulled away a little bit. You know, Cam, a good point that Rob uh, brought up. You and I talked about it, and you agree with me when I said it. You just nailed it, Rob, because we can talk about the numbers and Mahomes against the spread and all this. But what I come back to is Kansas City got pretty fortunate getting a depleted Miami team that sent half their roster that was frozen ice, all right? Yeah. Last week, you get a Buffalo Bill team without seven guys on defense at one point. Literally, like, get four stringers out there on defense. Kansas City got pretty beat up in that game. And remember, Cam, you and I talked about it earlier. When Baltimore hits you, they hit you violently. Like, they're going to be trying to hurt Kelsey. Like, they're going to throw Mahomes' ass to the turf. They hit you hard. They hit you often. They play physical. I think you're bang on. I think they wear them out, Rob. Yeah, I think they'll come after Pacheco first because he's the injured guy that'll try and start here. And if they get to him and then you're asking Mahomes to win it with his arm in that receiving core, I'm not sure that it happens, Gabe, over the course of 60 minutes. RobinoSports.com, WaitToTalk.com. says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. game manager mark i mean thrown for over 250 yards in divisional round 39 attempts i don't know if that really chalks up to being a game manager he was kind of throwing it around with one touchdown no interceptions pretty efficient whatever we saw from jared goff in two home playoff games i would expect something to dynamically different from what we're going to see from him on the road uh, that's just the way it's been his entire career his home road splits have always been pretty dynamic football full circle only on sports grid it's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman the early line and what it all means. Individual success. You should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon. Not bought at this deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news. Trades, cuts, and some movement in terms of starting quarterbacks. Pharrell, coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decisions. I have no idea. What the heck the Blazers are doing and what they in game live Just prime time yard for a grand slam. The bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to 2 baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race that was late good night. We waited for a one and a half. We got paid. Yeah. Then like the two and a half. Yeah. Jumped on. There's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever. These are the best weeks to bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
right, let's roll. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabe Morenci. Our buddy came over. He wanted uh He's a big ham, man. He knows when the lights are on and stuff. The door opened for a second, and he came running in. He wanted to be on the show. What's up, Parker? <laughs> that cat has got a lot of fur. He's a real fur ball. Yeah. He's, he's, he's got a big cat, coat. bro. He's a big cat. Yeah, he, 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 he looks, he's he looks like, like a raccoon. Like, yes, yes. Like Some cats are little. Like Your cat can go out into the alleyway, and the other cats are like, oh, God, because this cat's yeah, yeah. big. Thing is, too, Cam, is one of these cats, though, with a certain light angle and stuff at nighttime. Yeah. Like, he sort of looks like he's got that Cujo sort of raccoon thing, like he looks up at yeah. you. Is there, like, good boy, good boy. Like, he's, he's like, yeah, he's, he's got some personality, this dude. <laughs> oh, he's cool. <laughs> he's like a horse, though. He knows when the lights are on, right? He like he likes to be part of the show. Uh, Mick Aussie. Let's uh, speaking of uh, rare animals. Yeah. Let's uh, Mick Aussie steps yeah. up in it. Yeah. The rarest yeah. breed of them all, Mick Aussie. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Mick? Good. Where's Lincoln? Where's how's thanks, Lincoln thanks, doing? Thanks for the call. Hey, Lincoln. Yeah, he was just in here because I'm home on my own, so he was just up here with you guys. So hey, maybe Lincoln. He'll come back. Yeah, Lincoln, come back. Come here. Lincoln. We're calling him over. <laughs> hey, Lincoln. Yeah, we'll do a, do, on, do the animal show tonight. Yeah. Your dog doesn't you listen to you very well, Mick. I mean, yeah, I can't yeah. call him over, uh, but like, come on, man. What's going on? Here he is. Here he is. Come here. Here hey, get him up here. Up. Let's see. Yeah, say say hello on. to everyone, Lincoln. Come up here. Come in. Come on. Let's go, Lincoln. Here Jump up. Here there he is. Hey. Oh, good boy. Hey, there's nice a good blue. guy. <laughs> good boy, <laughs> Lincoln. Nice boot, good boy. Look at that. Good boy. Look how nice dogs are. Hey, they don't talk to Yeah, that's a good guy, Lincoln, huh? <laughs> All these trolls in the world, we should just have more animals, less humans. Exactly. That's the way I think. That's it's, good point. Animals are the best. Thank you. The funny I thing mean, is, he's licking you, and he looks so sweet and stuff. I've seen those yeah. videos, and I've heard him bark in the background. He's like, like he's not so... Yeah, he's just waiting for a little mouse or, you know. Yeah, no, that dog, he looks like he can hold his own, too. He looks pretty tough, but friendly. All right, Nick. He's a beanie. So we were um, we were talking about the Australian Open earlier, but let's get back to it. Great stuff. Uh, have you been to the Australian Open before? Have you ever been? No, I haven't. Uh, I would like to. It's very hot though, sitting there. It's yeah. a bit too hot for me. I've been to the professional. See, Camus, I was talking about earlier with Joker. Thing. Don't say he's done yet. It's hot, bro. Yeah, Even yeah, Aussies are like, God, it's hot. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Good point. <laughs> Yeah, someone fainted no, last you. night there. Yeah. Yeah, I've been I to thought... the tournament in South Australia that was the lead up to uh, the Aussie Open many years ago, and I've actually played on that court as well. So, yeah, obviously it's good, but ha, 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 Joker getting beaten. I loved it. Luckily, they even let him back into Australia because he could have been banned for five years the way he carried on during COVID. We know that. But good on Sinner, and I'm glad we'll have a new champ because, I don't know, Joker rubs me up the wrong way, mate. He really does lately. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm glad. He, you're right. I actually, put yeah. it this way. If, if it was you or me or Cam that did what he did, we'd never be allowed in that country ever again. Well, maybe you would. You're from there. But I think you're barred from Australia. <laughs> That's why you're here. <laughs> no, you no, know the crazy thing though was because because Nadal and Federer aren't there, right? That was the first time pro Djokovic crowd. I'm like, what's the deal? Like, I thought even there'd be more center people out there, but they just wanted uh, the Joker to win. I was just like, usually he's the villain, but uh, I guess the hero role didn't no. really work. For him, you know, no, it wasn't that Cam so watch, much. Dude. What was yeah, it? You know why they want they wanted more tennis? Yeah, point tennis. blank. Like when you go to these big events, people just cheer. For like, it's not like it's 50 50. It's not like a sports team, you know what I mean? So it's not like 50% of the people are there, like, oh, I'm a joker, and 50, oh, I'm for center. Yeah. No, they're tennis fans. They bought tickets, they didn't even know who was going to be playing. They paid big money for it. So you'll notice whoever's down two sets, they'll cheer for the underdog because they paid 800 bucks to go and they don't want to leave. <laughs> I'm just being real. <laughs> So people yeah. always say, oh, let's go, let's go, cheer later. I want to, I just you want to see a five set. You want to see a five set no. like classic. You know what I'm saying? You're right. I'm just saying Djokovic's his entourage and and team was they're massive. Like you saw the Serbian flags and stuff like that. They're like, oh the yeah, no, 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 especially there. overseas like, there yeah. in Australia. That's me. You're right. Yeah. You're good call. There's, no, no, you're yeah. right. It was it was more so 
But like Mick, like a lot of people don't like him. You know, he yeah. presented a fake COVID vax card, well, you know, years ago and stuff <laughs> oh at the border, God. right at the airport. So, <laughs> like I said, anyone else would be barred for life. But you know, whatever. If you're rich, um, so who do you think is going to win, Mick Sabalenka or Zhang and uh, Sinner and, and Medvedev? Well, I was hoping Coco Goff was in it. I like her. She's a beauty. But I think uh, Sabalenka will probably win. She's red hot favorite. What is she? Minus 650. Wow. And I think Sinner might win. I mean, he beat Medvedev. And, and sorry, he beat, beat Djokovic. And Medvedev, well, Cam, remember a couple of years ago, I'm serving at the Duck Lake. We took Medvedev in the final and he let us down, mate. The Russian's a bit soft. What's all these blue flags, eh? How is that? You can't even say you're from Russia. They just put a blue flag next to your name. That's a bit weak, I reckon. Hope Sinner wins it. But it could be close. There will be. All right. Cam, what's your pick? Um, Sinner uh, just four. for the record, Zeng is getting five and a half games. So you're taking Zeng plus five and a half games? I am. Uh, here's the thing about the ladies, too. We know Sabalenka's the best, and she's amazing. And Zhang's got to beat her on the first serve. But I'm going to tell you, Gabe, she's a very, very solid player, improved, uh, ranked 12th. I think the games – so remember, say it's 6-4, six, 6-4, four, six, four, we win. 6-4, six, 6-3, six, well, we Five win. and a half is a lot. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Like, you really got to get rolled, like, if you think about it. To, yeah, so to I lose by Zhang's six, right. so she'd have to lose 6-3, six, 6-3 three, six, three type of deal, and you don't yeah. win. Correct. But you got to believe that Zhang is going to win more than six games. And Sabalenka's problem, as you guys know, sometimes she comes out cold. Then she rallies once she gets her form. If Zhang jumps on her early, I think that spread bet's really good. I'm not sure if she's going to have it, what it takes to win the match, but I think she could actually take a set. Like, yes, and that's good for the spread bet. I'll call, you know what? I think you're on to something. I, I'm all over Sabalenka. I think she's awesome. But I could see it being, I'm going to call it 7-5, 7-5, 6-3. Seven five six four, like which that. gets you there. Seven, I think you know, first set seven five, and then in the second set you win like six four or something like that. Like she's played in so many of these finals now, she's yep. got she's starting to get mentally tougher, right? She's got ice in her veins, like you said, Mick too. She's kind of been the villain before in the past, right? Remember she played the Ukrainian girl, and the, you know the Ukrainian girl refused to shake her hand, and Sabalenka was like, "Well, f you know, whatever," right? Like. She, she was the villain last two years ago. She was a big villain. And she sort of, like, learned to deal with it and say, you know what? Let me channel all this. Plus, like I, we, me and we were talking with Rob Vino, man, she's got some serious shoulders and power, that girl. Like, she's the biggest. Like, look at her. She looks like Dwight Howard. Like, her shoulders no, yeah, are like, no. Yeah, no. she she's smokes a monster, she's the a ball, man. Like, yeah. Yeah, look at the, like look like they see like you said it. Look at the body type. That's like look at the, she looks forward. like a little girl next to her. Look at yeah, look at her arms. I know. Yeah, look at Jack. She's like, yeah, how you doing? I'm gonna say <laughs> this though. If you if you put Sabalenka and that Sakari girl, have you seen Sakari? She's ripped like an MMA fighter. Like she's popping out. I'm like, oh my god. Like I need muscles and six pack. And yeah, these girls are they're in shape, man. Yeah, the days of uh, Kornikova are gone. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, it's like nah, <laughs> we're in a new muscular world here of women's tennis now. Yeah. Um, all right. So, uh, Mick, what do you got for us in the NFL? What's the uh, Mick Aussie sheet say? Oh, mate, I this this is amazing. My form, and of course, it doesn't work all the time. But it really look at does. that thing. It really it's like you're making a bomb. <laughs> When, when I'm not sure of the game, I do the formula, yep. and it's amazing what it comes out to. Now, there's two factors that I'm really worried about. Okay, I'll tell you. The formula comes out to Ravens winning by three. But like I said last week, the new item, who does the NFL want to win? Now, it didn't rear its ugly head with the Chiefs versus Bills game, you guys just blew that game on your own without the refs blowing it. But all these NFL bosses, they're so close to the Super Bowl and so close to maybe having Taylor Swift there and millions more dollars to them. I am worried that the refs are going to influence this game and the Chiefs might win. So for that reason, I'm sticking with the Ravens, but the two factors... Chiefs, because the NFL want them to win, and also 
better quarterback. I am worried that Lamar Jackson will get injured and may not perform as well as Patrick Mahomes. If I was a Chiefs player, I'd be going into his knees and his legs. And like Pharrell says, and all us Aussies say, you hurt someone within the rules. None of this rubbish. Oh, I didn't mean to hurt him. you got to put Lamar Jackson down on his butt. And I think the Chiefs can win. But Well, the Ravens, the Ravens could say the same yeah, thing. I think the Ravens want to put the homes on his ass. Like, they want to put yeah. that guy, like, they got to hit that guy all day and all that. Like, Brancy, they got to hurt Mahomes. Like, not hurt, like, just keep a hit, hit him until he doesn't want to get up. That's that. And the Ravens can. They're tough. I think the key is exactly this. He's hard to sack. I talked about it. The Dolphins and the Bills were unable to sack him. But even if you don't yeah. sack him, you've got to at least hit him a bit. Get there right after he gets rid of the ball, disrupt him, let him know you're there. But Baltimore lead the National Football League in sacks. They had more sacks than anybody else. And the good thing about the Ravens is it's not prevalent that one guy gets the sack some teams will have all oh, they have 30 sacks on the year 40 sacks one guy has all of them or you know half of them etc the ravens get sacks from everybody right it's their defensive schemes more so than the players so they're you know they'll get the, you know, the cornerbacks get sacks the d lineman gets sacks the linebackers blitz right so they're they're pretty good at getting and i brought up the stat earlier guys when patrick mahomes is sacked three or more times they're one in three this year so he's only been sacked three times in a game four times. I guess is the best way of putting it. He's only been sacked three or more times in, in games four times this year. And they lost three of those games. So if you're the yeah. Ravens, Mick, put him on his ass. Get to him, right? And I think yep. they can. Well, I've been listening all week, and they reckon the Ravens are great, not so good. You know, they're great defense. They can get after the quarterback, but you know what? If the Chiefs run the ball and then do a lot of small passes, who knows, mate? It's really intriguing game. I think both games could go either way. Fascinating to watch, fascinating tactics, great coaching. So it's yes, not I much of a walk you're giving us here. Weekend. What's that? <laughs> not much of a lot. What's, what's, yeah, like what's your, 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 your sheet seems Quite to be on. wavering. It's like blowing Quite in the off. wind. I can go through every item if you want. Coaching advantage? No, I think. No, no, I don't. No, we don't need great. every item. What's the, the final score? score? Yeah, what's the score? Twenty-seven, twenty-four Ravens. But I am really worried about the refs and the NFL influence of wanting the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. I'm serious on that. I'm absolutely serious on that. I think they would prefer it. I'm not going to lie that they, they wouldn't like the Taylor Swift angle. To be honest, though, I don't even know if she would be there. I think she's on tour anyways. But it's not like Baltimore and San Francisco or whatever wouldn't be. So I don't think there's a conspiracy in or anything like that. I understand your, your thought process, but I don't buy it. All right, Mick, we'll get to this, uh, San Francisco and Detroit pick on the other side. Uh, I've got a bunch of best bets uh, before we'll get to the props. Full slate of college basketball uh, tomorrow as well. We'll get uh, Cam's golf picks. Yeah. Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. And New York D has the most sacks in the league. So, yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid.
I refer to him as a game manager, Mark. I mean, thrown for over 250 yards in divisional round, 39 attempts. I don't know if that really chalks up to being a game manager. He was kind of throwing it around with one touchdown, no interceptions, pretty efficient. Whatever we saw from Jared Goff in two home playoff games, I would expect something to dynamically different from what we're going to see from him on the road. Uh, that's just the way it's been his entire career. His home road splits have always been pretty dynamic. Football full circle, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman Trophy the early line. and what it all means. Individual success. You should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon. Not bought at the deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news trades, cuts. And some movement in terms of starting quarterbacks, Pharrell, backup quarterbacks. coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decisions. I have no idea what the heck the Blazers are doing and what they in are. game live Just prime a time. Yard for a grand slam. In the bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to two baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race that was late night. We waited for a one and a half. We got a yeah. patient. Then like the two and a half. Yeah. Jumped on. There's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever. These are the best weeks to bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I am Ryan. So we're kicking it. Mick Aussie in the house uh, with us. Love his sheet and his algorithm and the uh, the reasoning that goes into his plays here. So you gave us 27-24, which I don't think is a bad score, Mick, actually. I sort of get the same feeling here. I think Baltimore are going to win, but at this point in time, betting against Kansas City is insanity. It really is. I mean, Mahomes is 10-1 and one against the spread as an underdog. It's insane. So uh, what about Detroit and San Francisco? Well, I didn't do the sheet because it only works when I'm not sure. I'm sticking with my initial gut feel. I believe the 49ers will win, but I think the Lions will absolutely cover that. I know you don't, don't think so. I heard you today. Lions are a big chance. I need to apologize to Jared Goff. I call him Jared Goff the ball up recently, but he's played very well. But the 49ers were terrible. Let's be honest. They should have lost to Green Bay. Green Bay defenders couldn't even catch an interception. Disgraceful. They were so lucky to win. I'm going to say it straight out. Purdy was terrible. What, he's like a little kid, wasn't sure whether to wear a glove or not because it's raining. He needs to play well, and I think he will. And if he plays well and he throws it deep, because we all know about the line, secondary's no good. We hear that every five minutes on the NFL talk. It's all up to Purdy. Purdy plays well, 49ers will win, but if not, I think the Lions are a real chance, and they've got a good road record. I know they're not that good in the rain and so forth, but I think the Lions can keep it close, but 49ers to win, and whoever wins this game, I hope wins the Super Bowl, because I don't like the Chiefs or the Ravens. <laughs> Mick Aussie in the house uh, with us. And finally, in closing, Mick, how about them Oilers, 15 games in a row? Oh, oh, wow, what about the horrible start they had? Sacked the coach 15 in a row, they're going for the record. It's pretty cool, isn't it? And I really hope they get it. Put us on the map, and very good, mate. We need the Stanley Cup to come to Canada. That's for the reason you don't want to do it. Four-day work, bro. Nice. <laughs> 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 